Of the top eight solar generators, which one is the best for you? I'm gonna go over in this video the top picks of all the units that are on the market that are capable of running a house, RV, cabin, anything off grid or for backup power. This is not sponsored in any way, shape or form. I am not being paid to tell you anything in any way, shape or form. My opinion cannot be purchased. This is just the facts. And you can find all of this information for free on my free solar generator comparison chart, which I'll have linked down below. Now you can see on my comparison chart here that I have these cells that are made out in purple. And those are the ones that we're gonna be focusing on. They are all found in this heavy cap tab but there is one in the ultra cap tab here because it has such a large inverter that has to be into this tab. And you can see that pretty much the other units that are in the ultra cap tab are from the heavy cap tab. They're just multiplied, meaning there's two of them or four of them. They're just expanded in some way in order to have more power. So I'm gonna give you my top three at the very end of this, but I want you to be able to know all of the best options that are on the market. So I've chosen these eight to look at because in my opinion, they're the ones worth looking at. Now, the most important factor for most people is going to be price. There's three parts to the price breakdown and that's how much can it run at once, how long can it run, and how fast can it charge? So that's inverter, battery, and solar. There are other things to consider as well, like how heavy is it? Because if it's 500 pounds, then it's probably not gonna work in an RV. But as well as life cycles, life cycles are really important for some people. They're not so important to me. But when it comes to price, we're only looking at those first three things. Just keep in mind, there are other factors to this price. After we break down the price of each one of these, we're gonna look at the inverter capability as well as its expandability, the batteries and its expandability, as well as the solar and its expandability, and a few other small things. On my solar generator comparison chart, if you just scroll down to the very bottom, I give the current price, plus factoring in what the price per watt is for the inverter, battery, and solar. Then I combine all of that information into a total wattage price for each unit. For the High Solus Apollo, it is currently $4,000 at a whole watt price of 96 cents. For the Jackery 5000 Plus, it is $3,500 for 62 cents per watt. The EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra is $5,000 for 80 cents per watt. But cheaper than that still is the Pecron E3600 LFP at a whopping at a whopping 48 cents per watt. That is very very cheap. The EcoFlow Delta Pro 3 is $2,800 at 82 cents a watt. Anchor Solux F3800 Plus $3,200 at 79 cents per watt. The Bluetti Apex 300 is $1,600 for 57 cents per watt. Also very, very affordable. And then the last one is the Battery Evo Walrus G4. It is currently $6,000 and comes out to the lowest of all of these at 47 cents per watt. This means that the first place winner for best bang for the buck or best price for what you get is the Walrus G4. Second place is in the heavy cap section, which is gonna be the Pecron E3600 LFP. But there's so much more to the picture than price, and that is where the inverter capacity is so important. So we're gonna talk about what the inverter can run as a single unit, how far can it expand, and what it takes to have single phase and split phase power. Just for reference, single phase power is basically like plugging something into your outlet. Anything you can just plug into a normal outlet, that's single phase power. Split phase power is where you're gonna run power to your whole house. That's gonna be things for like a well pump, electric dryer, electric water heater, just things that are high demand, they require split phase power. Additionally, just to get power to all of the outlets in the house, you need split phase power. Starting off again with the High Solus Apollo, it is a three kilowatt inverter, which is the smallest inverter out of all of these here. And that's single phase power only but it has the ability to link two units together and get split phase power. And it also has the unique ability that no other unit has where you can put three of them together and get three phase power. Additionally, you can expand even up to eight Apollos together to get a whopping 24 kilowatts of output. And the beauty is for every unit you add, you're also adding more battery, more solar. It's just all around more expanded. One other really cool feature of the Apollo that I don't think applies to any other unit here is the balancing. Meaning if Apollo 1 is using more power than Apollo 2, then Apollo 2 will send extra battery over to Apollo 1 so that way their batteries drain at the same rate. The same applies if Apollo 1 has 4,000 watts of solar going into it and Apollo 2 has no solar going into it, then half of the solar input going here will get transferred over to the second unit. I don't know of any other unit that has balancing like that, so the Apollo has all of that built in with its inverter. Now the Jackery 5000 Plus 
has a 7.2 kilowatt inverter that is split phase capable as a single unit. You can put two units together and double that output, but you're required to use their smart transfer switch, which allows you to back up power to 12 circuits. So you do not have the option to get double the amount of power and run everything in your house. You're going to be funneled down to only those 12 circuits. Similarly with the Delta Pro Ultra, it has a 7.2 kilowatt inverter as well, but you can technically put up to three of them together with their smart home panel too. But again, you're limited to 12 circuits. If you just put two units together, you're gonna get 12 kilowatts of output and it just uses a 50 amp simple hub. And that's gonna allow you to then run power to your whole house if you're using an interlock switch. The Pecron E3600 LFP is a 3.6 kilowatt inverter and that's single phase only. It does have the ability to join two of them together to get split phase power at 7.2 kilowatts. The EcoFlow Delta Pro 3 is a four kilowatt inverter, kind of a happy medium so far. And you can also link two of those together to double that using the 50 amp hub, even though you're not gonna get 50 amps. That's just what that device is called. Or you can put three of them together with the EcoFlow Smart Home Panel 2. Again, you're limited to 12 circuits. The Yanker Solux F3800 Plus as well has split phase power and you can link two of them together either with their smart panel or a 50 amp hub. So far only the Apollo and the E3600 have single phase only where you have to get a second unit in order to get split phase. And then lastly in our ultra cap tab is the battery Evo G4 which has a ridiculously super powerful 15 kilowatt inverter as a base unit. By and large as a single unit, as well as even expanded units, the Battery Evo Walrus G4 wins this category. So that's the second category that it's won because it has the most powerful inverter. So the G4 is the winner of this one as well. Going on to battery capacity, there's a few things here to factor. One, the total internal capacity, as well as two, it's expandable capacity. It's also important to factor if it uses lithium NMC or lithium iron phosphate. With the High Solus Apollo, we are looking at a total battery capacity of 5.4 kilowatt hours. I'm gonna be rounding these to the closest tenths of a kilowatt hour, so that way it's easier for everybody to understand. So Apollo is 5.4 kilowatt hours with a total expandable capacity of 32.3 kilowatt hours. And that's, and that's just with one unit. Remember, each unit you add, you can keep doing that. With the Jackery 5000 Plus, it's a five kilowatt hour battery going up to 30.2 kilowatt hours. The EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra is a 6.1 kilowatt hour battery and is fully expandable up to 30.7 kilowatt hours per unit. The Pecron E3600 LFP is 3.1 kilowatt hours and will expand up to 15.4 kilowatt hours per unit. Now the EcoFlow Delta Pro 3 has an internal battery capacity of 4.1 kilowatt hours. Again, that's kind of in a happy medium between what we've mentioned so far, but it'll only expand up to 12.3 kilowatt hours total because it can only have two expansion batteries. And the Anchor Solux F3800 Plus is 3.8 kilowatt hours, but it will go all the way up to 26.9 kilowatt hours of capacity. The Blue Eddy Apex 300 has a 3.1 kilowatt hour battery and a total expandable capacity of 12.3 kilowatt hours. Now there needs to be an asterisk with the Blue Eddy units because they have like three different external batteries. So depending on which battery you get will determine what the battery capacity is. This is based on the largest battery that they offer, which was their B300S, I think. Their current battery that they mostly use is the B300K. So keep that in mind. The B300K is actually a smaller capacity. And then lastly, we have the Walrus G4, once again, with a ridiculously large number of 23 kilowatt hours just in the internal battery. And it's fully expandable up to 207 kilowatt hours. That's insane. That's just ridiculous. Okay. But there's one major downside. Of all of the units mentioned here, the Walrus G4 is the only unit that uses lithium NMC or commonly known as lithium ion batteries, whereas everything else uses lithium iron phosphate or LFP batteries. Really what that means is the Walrus G4 is rated to 2000 cycles, whereas everything else is gonna be around 3000, 3500 or 4000 cycles before you start to see degradation. But life cycles are tricky and that's why it's not a main deciding factor for me because it really comes down to how hard you charge and discharge a battery. So overall for battery capacity, the Walrus G4 is the winner again. So that's three for three so far, but it does have one knock on it for being lithium NMC. 
In second place would be the High Solus Apollo because of its expandability. It has the largest expandability out of all of these other units listed here. And it's very close to a lot of the other units of their internal capacity. Now the fourth category, which is the lifeblood of the whole system is going to be solar input. Now as usual, there's multiple parts to this. The first is the overall wattage, just in total, how many watts can go into it. But secondly, it has to relate to efficiency and ease of connection. And that is gonna be the charge parameter. So getting straight into it, the High Solus Apollo comes in with a total solar input capacity of five kilowatts. That's a range from 60 to 500 volts and up to 18 amps. The Jackery 5000 Plus will allow up to 5.2 kilowatts of solar input, but that's split between three solar inputs. The four kilowatt input is a rating between 135 and 450 volts and up to 15 amps. So not too difficult to work with and to get 4,000 watts, but the other two inputs are specific proprietary Jackery connections. Now you can get an adapter to use normal solar panels and that's what I'd highly recommend. But if you wanna use that, it's a voltage rating of 16 to 60 and an amp rating of 10.5. The EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra is similar. It has a charge parameter for the four kilowatt input of 80 to 450 volts in 15 amps. And the low voltage input is 35 to 150 volts at 15 amps, which will get you an extra 1.6 kilowatts totaling 5.6 kilowatts. Now the Pecron E3600 LFP will allow for a total of 2.4 kilowatts and that's split between two inputs at 32 to 150 volts and 20 amps. The EcoFlow Delta Pro 3 also has a high voltage and a low voltage input similar to the Delta Pro Ultra. But the difference with this one is the high voltage will only let in 1.6 kilowatts and that's a range from 30 to 150 volts and 15 amps. And the low voltage is gonna be from 11 to 60 volts and 20 amps at one kilowatt of input. The grand total input is 2.6 kilowatts. The Anker Solix F3800 Plus has two solar inputs, and this is a huge improvement over the previous model of the F3800, but for the F3800 Plus, it's 3.2 kilowatts of input, and that's split between two inputs rating from 11 to 165 volts and 17 amps. And then the Blue Wedi Apex 300. It is now 12 to 150 volts and 12 amps, letting in 2.4 kilowatts. That's split between two inputs, so each one's doing 1.2 kilowatts. And then lastly, we have the Battery Evo Walrus G4. This will let in a grand total of 8,000 watts. So of any unit with a single unit, this is gonna be the highest solar input of eight kilowatts, but the charge parameter is not ideal. It's 90 to 230 volts and up to 80 amps. And I'll have to tell you now, I'm gonna have a video about this coming out really soon and I'm gonna show you how to fix this problem. But the problem is you can't get eight kilowatts of solar input for what the cables and connectors can handle. You need more than 30 amps, which is what the MC4 connectors are rated to in order to get eight kilowatts of input. So I have a solution for that and I'll show you that in that video. So in terms of what works, so in terms of what is the highest solar input for a single unit, Battery Evo Walrus G4. Once again, that is the fourth category that it's won in a row. But looking at the other units here, the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra has the next highest solar input of 5.6 kilowatts split between two inputs. And a very close third is gonna be the Jackery 5000 Plus at 5.2 kilowatts. And then right after that, the Apollo at five kilowatts. I 100% promise you this is in no way a sponsored video or a push to sell the Walrus G4 or anything like that. This is a head-to-head -head comparison. You can see all the specs for yourselves. This is just how it is. The big drawback is the weight. So far, the Walrus G4 has won pretty much every category, but it weighs a whopping 441 pounds. You're not putting that in an RV. You're not putting it in a van. Maybe you could put it in a bus because you can get some sort of lift to put it up in there. This is not a portable unit by any means. This is something you roll off of the pallet that it ships on and then you plop it in your garage or wherever it needs to be and it's gonna stay there. Now, it does roll around on a hard surface very easily, but if you gotta go upstairs or anything like that, just forget about it. So for all of the other units, the Apollo is also very heavy, but only 132 pounds. So very easy for two people to move. The Jackery 5000 Plus is 135 pounds. The Delta Pro Ultra, the top section comes off separated from the battery. So a whole unit's 186 pounds, but the top section's only 70 and each battery's 116. Now the Pecron is gonna be the lightest of all of these because these are systems that are big enough to run a house. So we're not looking to just do some light camping or anything like that with this. This is a big unit that you could take camping, but it only comes in at 79 pounds, just enough for one person to move on their own. 
The Delta Pro 3 is a surprising 113 pounds, and also surprising is the F3800 Plus at 132 pounds. The Apex 300 is the lightest of all of these at 48 pounds. So if weight is not a concern, then it obviously looks like the Walrus G4 is the winner. But if weight is a concern, if you need to be able to move this some way, then you're gonna to wanna to look at these other units. It's also worth mentioning right now, pretty much all of these have a five year warranty with the low exception being the Bluetti Apex 300 is only four years. But once again, the Walrus G4 has an incredible 10 year warranty. So now for my top picks, if I were to choose one overall system that's my favorite, it's the Apollo. The reason is it has the balancing ability between all of the units. So regardless of how big I expand it, I know that I'm gonna be able to use the whole capacity of the battery. The issue with other units is that they're not communicating between the batteries. So if leg one of my electrical panel in my house is using more power than leg two, then this battery pack is gonna drain faster than this one. And then once this one dies, I lose all of that output power. I don't run into that issue with the Apollo. So for overall versatility, expandability, mobility, fast solar input, everything, the Apollo is my top pick for most versatile, just best all around to grab, but it's not the cheapest. So then we look at, well, what is the absolute best bang for the buck? And hands down, it's gonna be the Battery Evo Walrus G4. That's because it has such a large inverter, large battery, and large solar input just as a single unit. The sacrifice there is the weight. So if you just wanted to buy something once and it's not gonna move really, that's the one that I would go with. But if you need something portable, yet also capable of still running the house, this may be a unit that you take from your house, put it in your RV, take it to your cabin, take it to a friend's house after a hurricane or a flood or a fire. It just is easier to move around, but is still very expandable and capable. That's gonna be the Pecron E3600 LFP. Not only is it the second most affordable unit on the market, very closely behind the Walrus G4, but you get the portability. And I would say that the runner up from all of these is probably the Jackery 5000 Plus. I really don't care for most Jackery units. Just like the one that's on the list here, the Explorer 3000 Plus that uses a lithium ion battery cell and it has no expandable battery capacity and it only works with their proprietary panels. But what I like about the 5000 Plus is it has a really powerful inverter that you likely don't need to expand and put a second unit on because that's the downside of it is you have to use their smart transfer switch. There's no simple hub to use, but it has really good solar input that are not proprietary connections. I would say probably tied for fourth place is the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra, but the price between the 5000 Plus and the Delta Pro Ultra can't be ignored. It's 25% less to get the Jackery 5000 Plus over the Delta Pro Ultra. So if you don't need that future expandability, you might wanna take a look at the 5000 Plus. Either way, my very top pick for most versatile and expandable over time is the Hisolus Apollo. My second pick for the absolute most affordable one on the market is the Walrus G4. And my third pick for most portable yet still can run a house and all of your essentials is the Pecron E3600 LFP. Now, if you made it to the end of this video, I really appreciate you staying with me. Go ahead and smash that like button. And if you truly, seriously want to get the best pricing on these kits with the cables, with the adapters, with the solar panels, with cable carry cases, with everything that you need, you buy it in one spot and you get everything you need, visit the website poweredportablesolar.com, which will soon be minutemansolar.com. And you can also email me to info at poweredportablesolar.com or info at minutemansolar.com. I'd be happy to help you find a system that fits your needs specifically.